Hey, you guys, I have a beautiful message from the Lord today. So the Lord has called you to live a beautiful life. He wants you to know all the beautiful things that he has for you. I have so many beautiful words, scriptures to deliver today. The first thing I have is Deuteronomy 28.10. And it states... Let's go verse 11, okay? All right, 10 through 14. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of, the, of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and are careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command to you this day to the right or to the left to go after other guys to serve them now you guys there has just been so first let's just process what all that means god is saying we are chosen to live a special life we're called to live a dutiful and bountiful life we are called to have the resources from god okay so that includes home children you know financial success that includes a lot of things god will provide one thing i know about the lord is that he will provide and there's many things i know about him but that one that's the first thing about him okay he even said that my grace is sufficient like he will let you know what he's doing for you and that is why i was chosen to bring this word to you guys today so when he says in the, in the text he will bless all the work of your hand this is about when you create something that the lord has caused you to create the joy the beauty of it all we don't want to think about the negative things the persecution that comes because we know it's part of the game we know this. We know that's the part of the game. We know that we're going to have to deal with the persecution because we chose to follow Jesus. <clears throat> and in the last days, um, there's a lot about the word that's just so rich. OK, the word is just so rich and you can eat on it all day and never get tired of eating it. You can you can th you'll thirst for it. And you'll drink from it and you'll never stop more, like you'll never not want to drink from the word of God because it's the truth and our body craves the truth like our spirit craves the truth and sometimes the flesh does want to fight you okay the flesh wants to control you um guys I had a recent situation with a counterfeit kingdom husband and when I tell you this man really hurt me so bad that he said something to me and the Lord was like, wow, you know, well, he said this, what you're going to do? And I didn't say anything back to him in that moment. I was just like, well, I didn't, it's like, I didn't even react to it because it was just so much for me that I was just like, wow, God, like I went through this whole freedom conference thing. I prayed on him multiple times and the Lord told me that something would happen today. But it wasn't what I thought. And when he said that to me, I was like, yeah, I'm done with this guy. God told me, he was like, now say to him how you feel. Say say how you really feel. And this guy has just been degrading me. He had just been talking to me crazy. He had just been saying stuff that are just, it's just not it's not something that you say to someone that you're trying to date or that you take serious 
you know, he would call me late at night, you know, want to come see me late at night. And I'm just like, you don't like me like that. You know, it, I was just drifting away from him. But if this is the man, this is the man that God said was for me. So why is this man acting like this? It, it was my, it was, it was in the back of my head. Why are you acting like this? You know, why should I even have to tell him these kind of things? Why doesn't he know these things already? That was me being arrogant. That was me being, okay, boom. I expect this man to be different, but he's like any other man. He has flaws. Anyway, um, <clears throat> to be uh, clear, you guys, um, the Lord told me to just let this man know that I felt like he degraded me and I felt like he is talking down to me and he thinks that I'm his hoe. And I didn't say these things to him because I didn't want that conflict. I didn't want to go there with him. I didn't want to have the conversation with him because as soon as he said that to me, I was done. I checked out. God fought me on it. He was like, you sure you don't want to say it? You sure you don't want to say it? I want you to go ahead and say it. Go ahead and tell him. Go ahead and call him. Go ahead and text him. But I just couldn't come back from that. Pride would not let me come back from it. When you're being disrespected, how do you act? Ask yourself that. But anyway, you guys, I don't want to bounce around too much. I just want to make sense. I tend to do that quite a bit. It's bouncing around. But you guys, I loved this man. I thought I thought I loved him. I cared about him so much. But when he said those things to me, it all went away. It all went away because there is a breaking point, And that's something that I learned. I should have said something a long time ago about how he's been treating me and how he talks to me. But I'm so busy thinking that I have to turn the other cheek and forgive and forgive. It's like, yeah, you have to forgive, but you're not even telling the person that you're mad at them. You're not even confronting them about them you being upset. You're just accepting it. And that is not what God intended for me either. So I, I want to I say all that to say, you know, that man is yours. That man is yours. If you are like me and you just chose to get it right with another man, you might still have to learn that lesson of like having those difficult conversations with with the person that you're seeing. You're going to have to learn how to talk to this person if it's a kingdom marriage. Now, after I interacted with him in that way and I cut him off, it felt so good because he had made me feel so bad about how he treated me that I literally... I literally needed to heal from him and it wasn't even a relationship. It was a it was like a godly what God was putting together, but it was not coming together how it should have because we were both it was both things we were both doing that we might have spoke about and things that we didn't speak about that was between us and God. It's like when you're when God's telling you to go left and you go right and you expect God to just give you everything you want. It don't work that way. Sometimes you need to sit your butt down. If God tell you to sit your butt down, don't go out there and be hanging out with this folk and that folk because they're, they're trying to get in your mind. There, It's like the enemy has agents too. The enemy has people too to try to, it's just like you have destiny helpers. You have people that's, that's going to be, that's going to be getting in your way. And I definitely let people get in my way too much last year. I let people drive me out the wall last year. To the point that I didn't have nothing left to give in myself. And what I'm trying to say is that when my ex hurt me in this way, and then God was just like, he wanted me to say something. I was just like, God, like, I ain't telling him that, you know, like, it was too much for me because I was not mature enough to see how important it, it was. I didn't, I, I failed to see how important it was. And I was hurt big time, though. I was hurt big time. And, you know, my ego was shot. And I was just all just, I was on this dating nap. I was on two different dating naps. And I was just, I'm talking about the whole day, texting dudes, texting men, texting men. And this was a couple days after. But I'm just texting men, texting men, calling them, texting them on the phone, you know, like it ain't nothing, lying. And I just, it felt so good to have a conversation with somebody that doesn't give you all these 
perimeters and all these boundaries and just you can't get far in the conversation with is certain things that would have broke through in our marriage because for certain people God had put together he was gonna let them get to know each other in the marriage and that's another thing that I just I doubted a little bit or I just didn't see why because traditionally it's like I would I couldn't wrap my mind around why this person and me we every time we see each other neither one of us be talking like that at first and then we open up to each other and it's like well maybe this person should call me more and so I started calling them but I didn't have nothing to talk about because they weren't talking and then it's just it was weird anyway I don't want to do too much with this word but I just want to say that in the skin spot journey you're fighting not just the regular problems you're fighting godly problems too like you're fighting problems that people other people may not have to deal with so you have to understand if you're not mature enough to be in this relationship you bound to drizzle down like for real if you're not where you need to be with god when you're seeking this person because that's another thing in the pursuit men love a chase okay so we definitely don't want to be running from them but we definitely want to not be chasing them okay women yeah i say what i say men lead let them do that and they 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 know how to make they know how to make it clear who they like they know how to do that um and then there's oh this element of oh he's not doing enough for me oh he's not he's not thirsty enough or i want him to i want him to be obsessed obsessed with me low-key we as women have to get rid of that 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 stigma that because this last guy really took me for granted that this new guy better be overdoing it. We we gotta let that go. Okay. And another thing we have to let go of is feeling like somebody should take care of everything and we shouldn't have to take care of nothing. Um there's there's this thing about submission in a godly marriage, but you have work to do as well. You need to work as well and you have to, you know, chalk it up to to the person that you're with of course but if God intends for you to eventually be provided for let him go ahead and do the work later down the road let him do all the work later on when God says it's okay for him to do that because he may not be able to afford taking care of you like right now right when he meets you like maybe even in the first year maybe in the first two years or the first three years let him build it up his his wealth let him build his wealth and you don't know what kind of fortune 500 company this man got or what kind of millionaire he's going to be one day so you support him even though he may not be taking care of everything regarding you it's okay women we can work we can do that. I know that you're thinking. I know some of y'all are thinking, oh, well, in the Bible days, that ain't how they did it. Well, we're not in those times now, are we? We're, well, we are in the last days, okay? We, this is, this is documented. This is all documented. God, God know, God know what he's doing, right? We're not off the wheels, okay? We're not, we're not a lost people. We are very much so in the Bible, but what I want you guys to understand is that how you're speaking on this man, how he better do this and better do that for you. There's some women out there that want to take care of him. And there's a woman, and of course that woman may not be for him. But what I'm saying is that you can <clears throat> push your timing back if you don't wise up and you don't get mature and you don't get hip to the things that God wants to put in your life. But he has not put in your life because of your entitlement in thinking that certain things belong to you. Now, that is just some of our problems. Um, unfortunately, we have to let some of that go. Now, back to this story. Um, I mistreated several dudes because I just realized, well, I'm doing this because I'm hurt. I'm doing this because I spent my last year with someone and it didn't go well and so now i'm seeing men i'm when i seeing them i'm 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 texting them you know i went out on a couple of evenings you know but 
overall, if I could take back my time with them, I would. Because now, now I know why I was doing it. I was doing it because I was hurt. <clears throat> and I just want... <sighs> I wanted to finally be appeased. I wanted to finally, like, what I really wanted was for him to call me and make up with me. But I had blocked him. How was he going to call me? I had cut him off. I had let him go. Well, not fully, but I thought I did. How could I expect him to go and do those things and, and be bold enough to get me back if I couldn't even call him? or tell him these things in person, you know, and I had to check myself, well, really, God had to check me, because I swore up and down, I knew I was, what I was talking about, but God had to check me on that, because it's not just about you, and um, I even had to pray, it's like, it's like sometimes you really, you ask God to show you who this person is, or are they meant to be with you, and you're not thinking that, like, man, if I'm wrong, this person is a waste of my time. If I'm right about them, I kind of got to start this situation all over again. And the thing about that, God never gets tired of confirming things to us. But if he's just confirmed something to you and then something crazy happens... Don't ask for another confirmation because that's the enemy, okay? Now, what I, what I want you guys to understand is that you're not done yet, okay? You have plenty of things to do. A lot of us, we've gotten distant with our journey with God. We have not gone astray, but we have been like people under siege, and we've been feeling attacked, and we have not been coming to God about this attack. It's like we're complacent. We feel like the attack is just going to happen no matter what we do. And I want to tell you guys, no. I want to tell you guys, no, that's not what it is. Okay? Let's go to First Kings 17. Talk about the prophet Elijah. Now, let's go to the first one. Now, Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe and Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord of God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, because he's in hiding by then. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So you guys, even in the drought, Elijah was taken care of. Now his deal, his deal for God made him really, really be, made him really go out, um, like a soldier, like he really, um, Elijah was really, really strong in the Lord. He knew God so good and he was not afraid to let people know what they needed to hear. And he was not afraid to minister to people and he had boldness without embarrassment, which means he believed in God so boldly and so securely that he would not let you or you knew you got to respect this man of God. It was just in his air. It was just in his, how he carried himself, okay? His posture. He was just, he was secure in God. And that is what God intends for all of his people. Now, I do know how the world is full of negative Nancy's. And some of us can get social awkwardness or social anxiety or just not know how to relate to people because we don't want to offend them while we correct them. We don't want to seem weird. We don't want to be cringy. It's just so much, so many ways that people try to cut you low cut you high hit you below the belt it's so many things that we have to watch out for being christian evangelists preachers apostles prophets whatever we are okay it's so many things that you have to avoid so many hurdles you have to jump over and so when you finally get to doing what you're doing you're doing it a little bit like you're being careful too overly cautious I don't believe that Elijah was a cautious kind of person. I believe he knew better and he used his his, his mental. But we got to get out of this state of being scared to offend people that don't believe in God. 
because God is coming back to save the sinner. And though these though these people may be mad or they may be offended or they may be pissed off listening to a video of ours one day, when they change and they come over to God, they're going to be happy that they found us. They, they're going to randomly think about us one day like, hey, I feel like it's like, have you ever not really knew something, but you felt like you knew it a little bit? Some people, when they're lost, when you're lost, it's easy to be like, boom, I know that's God talking to me, right? That, that, that's, that's a gift to, to know that that's God talking to you, right? But sometimes you don't be willing to accept that gift. You don't be willing to accept that that, that was God telling you something because you're not, you're not done making mistakes yet. You're, you're not done being idolatrous. You're not done being an adulterer. You're not done in your witchcraft. You're still, you're still messing. It's still fun to you. But when that stuff ain't fun no more, when that stuff has worn out, it's welcoming your life and it's destroying your life, you're like, hey, I remember this thing that God said that one day because he was definitely talking to me through this person. That is what people are going to do about your word that the Lord has you put out there. So we take a step back and we think of stuff in their perspective. We're going to be just like them. We have to act in all our hours deal for the Lord, <clears throat> not try to appeal to, to the masses. All right. That's just that's just the point I'm trying to make. Now, again, you are not done. You don't have to speak on everything that comes to mind, though. Now, I want to um just say about First Kings 17. God brought the ravens to go in and feed Elijah when he was down. And he really needs to just look up about his situation because he's done the work. He done the work. All right. He was in distress. But God said, no, I got you. I got this. I got us. He said that. Now, after this, he if you go down a little further, there was a widow woman and he had the widow woman uh, bake a cake for him during this famine. And I'm sure you're familiar with the story, but let me give it to you again. Verse 12. Surely as the Lord lives, your God. So, I'm sorry. I don't want to rush. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son. Then we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. This is what the Lord says. The Lord God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil <clears throat> will not run dry until the day the Lord sends the rain on the land. You guys, some of us have been called to prophesy to people, but our belief has to be pristine. OK, remember that she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah, some time later the son of the woman who owned this house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. He, she said to Elijah, what have you done against me? No, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you kind of remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying at, and lay him on his bed, you guys. And then pretty much he brought the kid back to life. He cried out to God and the kid breathed back into life. What I want you guys to understand, three major key things right here. For one, this woman knew the power of God. She worshiped God. She loved God. But she was in a place where they didn't love God like that. They didn't know God. They followed false God. They followed Bill. Okay. Two. No, no, no. Before, before I, I part ways with that, when you have a belief that's so secure and it's solid, and it's solid, the Lord will pick you for things, uh, acts of service. Like, I'm not going to be, I don't want to be too religious, but if you've been working super hard on your charity, if you've been working super hard with the fruits of the Spirit, the Lord might call you to purpose in your church. OK, and you may be called to serve somebody that when they see you 
acting like that and they see you serving like that in the church, they may say something to the right person to get you up higher. You might have a new position. And that's what this word is about. Um, it, it's just the key themes of these things. It's the same things that we were taught in Ecclesiastes. It's, it's all about how much work you're putting in and knowing that you're you're not earning your grace and you're not earning the salvation. It's a gift. So if you treat this thing like a gift, the, if you treat this marriage like a gift, if you, treat, if you treat everything God gives you how you need to treat it, which is with care, he will honor that with more gifts, okay? Now, let's go really quickly. Let's just zoom right over to it. I'm not going to take too much time, I promise. I'm not going to take too much time by going to Malachi 3. Because you, know, you already know what I'm about to say. Will a mere mortal rob God, yet you rob me? But you ask, how are we robbing you? And tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. It will, no, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord. Then all the gener then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord. Now, you guys, what I want you to understand about that is that Jesus, he loves us and he wants to make sure we are sticking true to the word. Um, it's not easy to be a child of God. No, it's not. But we always have to make sure we do what we're supposed to do. Simple and plain. Okay. The second thing I want you guys to understand about this woman um, and with her relationship with Elijah she has so much faith in God that she was willing to believe. Yeah, if I go ahead and make this for this man, even though I'm about to die, my kid's about to die, I'm going to believe him because he said he's with God and he's a man of God. So I'm going to do this thing. So the Lord is depending on you to do something. You definitely want to do that because you know how the Lord blesses. Your belief is what changes everything. Amen. So just go ahead and do it. And then the third thing I want you guys to understand. We never forsake God when things do not go according to plan. Um, the good thing about the Lord is that he doesn't hold those things over our head too long. And when he's angry, he's not angry forever. But if you're like me and you had took a couple steps in the wrong direction and you realized what you was doing and you said, hey, God, like, something is not right my heart posture is not correct or the lord will tell you your heart posture is not correct it's like you feel off but you don't know what it is it's like this feeling of just regret bitterness resentment distress you are the stronghold of my life why do i need to be afraid there's nothing for me to be afraid of right so let me go ahead and do what god is telling me to do okay that's what that's what i'm bringing you guys to and like I said, I was going to make that quick, right? But when the prophet Elijah took the son and God brought him back to life, he cried out to God, okay? Our power comes from the Lord. So absolutely, we need to walk in solidarity. But absolutely, we need to know that our authority comes from Jesus, the power, the name, and the blood of Jesus. It's all within us. We are covered in the blood of Jesus. His name is on us. And his power is flowing. His salvation has saved us. So we are to make our kingdom spouse feel the same thing. And yeah, you will have to minister to that woman or to that man. Yeah, you will have to say some things to them. Let's go back to my word, okay? Let's go back to, yeah, now. Yeah. The thing about sin, um, Satan hated humans, but God said, this is my greatest creation. I love them. And so Satan had to trick us. He tricked us into sin. 
he gaslit us. Satan is the biggest gaslighter. Now, he felt like if he can get man to sin, then men will be filled full of what God hated. So then he put God in, he tried to put God in a dilemma that if he reacted to what he hated and not about how he, what he loved, he would get God to like do something that God would not do this out of his character. It's about giving God the glory and the victory. Us being saved is not really about us. It's about God's wondrous power, his miracles, his righteous right hand and his mighty arm. The salvation is of the Lord. And so Satan tried to work what God loves against him. The same thing he does to us, the same thing that he tries to do. And he tries to make us feel like, oh, you want to sin or you want this. We don't want that. And as soon as you learn how to say no to the enemy, you will be in such a better off place. God said to Adam, he says, you can't fix this. I got this. I'm going to kill your sin and not you because I love you, said the Lord. You are beautiful. You guys, the Lord told me I was beautiful. He told me you're beautiful. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. I think you're beautiful. So if you know who you are in God, you know you're full authority with God. People can't lie and tell you you're ugly. People can't lie and tell you you're not attractive. People cannot lie and say that you're prideful if you have a heart of a servant. People cannot lie and make things up to give you a false uh, depiction of yourself if you always come to God and you treat him like you know, you treat him good and you put him first. It's very, very easy to 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 take what people say. And like, if you have issues with insecurity, like I did, because growing up, I was heavy. I was heavy. I was very big as a young girl. And I didn't get pretty to me until I was like 18 or 19 when I had lost a lot of weight. Because you don't feel good about yourself. So you don't think you, that you could be pretty. And so, you know, the guys never looked at me. It, it was like a over time when I started to come into myself and I stopped being so shy. That's when I started to get the masculine like attention. And, you know, women would give me more attention to and would be more nice to me. But I was treated very bad as a child and I was very insecure. So it's times where I'm not catching on to how this is something that was been rooted in me since I was a little girl and struggling with my weight. Sometimes people say stuff and it take you back to that moment and you're just like, oh, is that who I am now? And the thing is, we should never be doing that. And so that's another thing about having boldness. You know, you have to know without a shadow of a doubt and have confidence in what the Lord has brought into your life. And before I get to this scripture, I want to take you guys to Jeremiah 29. Because I just feel like that's where we're at with it right now. And you know what I'm going to say. It's verses 11 through 14. For the, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to pray with me. Pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I've banished you, declares the Lord. And will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. You guys, the Lord knew that we were far away from him. We were never not on his mind. So I want you guys to understand he's going to pick you up and take you back to that place so that you can understand this but you have to let it be clear and true to you in your heart you have to know fully understand and fully acknowledge he has brought you here he has gathered you he has let you find him but only because you started to seek him with your whole heart if you're on this video you have sought out you have sought out the lord with your whole heart and that's the only reason why you were able to find him this time because other times you thought he was going to do the hard work and he always does the hard work so sometimes you need to do what's hard for you to do and go ahead and reach out first okay 
Now, if that communication in your relationship is not secure, you're not going to, you're not, if you don't know how to talk about stuff, you're not going to make it through the hard times. You're not going to make it through the hard times if you can't even have a conversation, a difficult conversation. You have to master the art of speaking about things that make you uncomfortable. You have to get over that. Point blank, period. That's another thing the Lord is saying about these kingdom marriages. Yeah, we, we missed out. Yeah, we, we we made a few mistakes this year. But hey, chin up. You are not done yet, okay? Now, the next scripture I have here. I want to talk a little bit about Proverbs 5. Now, when I was going through a little bit of sin, um, I told the Lord I would be celibate for a couple of days, like for a week. And you guys, I was not able to make it through the week. I actually failed miserably. But not only that, I slept with like three different guys. And all of this was because things went wrong with someone who I thought, of course, the Lord had told me he was my kingdom spouse. I turned around and was so hurt because I felt so degraded and so undervalued by them. And I went and I sinned against God. And it has nothing to do with that man. It has everything to do with me. And let me tell you why. The Lord brought me to this. He brought me to Proverbs 5. My son, pay attention to my wisdom Turn your ear to my words of insight that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. So I want you to understand, you guys, the Lord was talking about me when he said this, because I was definitely tempting men. I was definitely talking to men in a way that caused them to sin. I talked about this on a couple of my other videos, but, you know, the scripture about if you look upon a woman to sin you already created sin with her in your heart, and thus you've sinned. Um, I want to say that's Matthew. Uh, yeah, Matthew five twenty eight. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You guys, I was sitting in thirst traps. I was sitting in videos. I was seeing naked pictures of myself and i was doing the most and let's go to verse four but in the end she is bitter as gall sharp as a double-edged sword her feet go down to death her steps lead straight to the grave she gives no thought to the way of life her paths wander aimlessly but she does not know it now then my sons listen to me do not turn aside from what i say keep to a path far from her do not go near the door of her house let you lose your honor Lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Let strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. And at the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You guys, when you deny the Lord, when he tries to, when he tries to, when he disciplines you, you have to sit there and just take it like, you have to allow him to put that wisdom in you because it's changing you. The wisdom changes you. And I'm going to continue. At the end of your life, you will groan when your body and f flesh are spent. You will say how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers to, or turn to my ear to my instructors. And I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. Drink water from your own cistern. Running water from your own well, should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. Now, I want you guys to understand, here's another scripture at some point that spoke about a woman that's married and she gets men to come to her house because her husband is is out to sea or he's on a long trip you know i've never been like a side chick or anything i never dated a married man but the lord definitely put it in my heart like 
you don't even touch stuff like this. Like, you don't even get close to it. Like, if it feels wrong, it is wrong. You committed the sin already. But not only did I do that, I committed the sin over and over again. I'm starting all these conversations. I'm having all of these. It's like I had this touch of like... I didn't want to ruin nobody's life. I didn't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I realized that in the midst of me saying, you know what? I'm just going to go out here and have some fun because you're not the one. So I'm going to do something to make myself feel better. Instead of me doing that, I could have just gave that energy to God and worshipped him with it. But I was so busy trying not to be hurt that I hurt myself more than I can imagine. So, guys, what I'm trying to say essentially is that when I cut away from God, I made some of the biggest mistakes and I never seen myself making. I never wanted to make. I never done these things before. And I know that it was Satan trying to attack me with all of this pain. And if I knew what I've read then, I would understand. Um, and I also want to go really quickly Um, Because this word was supposed to be short. Hosea. Hosea in the Bible. Now. He was compared. So through Hosea's marriage to Gomer. God shows his great love for his people. Comparing himself to a husband whose wife has committed adultery. Using this image as a metaphor for the covenant between God and Israel. Now, many times was Gomer, many times was Gomer, which is Hosea's wife, leaving Hosea and leaving him for John's and having babies, having babies by men that she had committed adultery with. Now, I want you guys to understand, um, when we give ourselves in a certain way to the world and to sin, we are punished by that. It's a lasting memory. It's painful. We go through consequences in, in the present for it. And it just seems like it never ends. But if you're giving those situations to God and you're repenting, you can change. However, if you keep doubling down on what you do, you're gonna you're gonna end up a place you don't wanna be. Let's go to Hosea two No Hosea three The Lord said to me, Go show your love to your wife again, though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer of lethic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will behave the same way towards you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without epod or household gods. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord, their God and David, their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and, and to his blessing in the last days. And I also want to go to verse. Um, I also want to go to Hosea 2, 17. I'll remove the names of the Baals from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. You guys, it was a point in my life where I was in idolatry as well. And when the Lord brought that up to me, it really, really convicted me in my spirit because You know, the fact is, I was really lost and I was really far gone, but God still saved me. And so we can't let these counterfeits, we can't let these spouses, we can't let anybody take us away from God. And I'm not going to speak on the counterfeits anymore. I just wanted to say that they they too can make you feel um, hurt by God. They can make you feel a way that you're not meant to feel about the Lord and when you realize that you feel that way, you have to go to God and say, God, please, please deal with this. Please deal with me. Please handle me because I don't know what this is about, but this is not how I truly feel. 
Um, I do believe that Satan definitely, he tries to lay things on us. And uh, if we don't go to God, it's a grave mistake. Grave mistake. Um, I don't want you guys to focus on the mistakes that you make, though. So my, my key point in mentioning all of that is about there's this sort of thing about being a woman that doesn't handle herself well and how you can cause men to sin in that. And what I will say is that, you know, I was losing a little bit of weight before and I was taking these really nice pictures of myself, you know, at the gym or at the at the park in leggings and a tight hoodie, you know, putting it all out there. And I was like, man, I look really good. Like I'm proud of myself. You know, I can't believe that my ex did me how he did me and called me fat and he did all these things. And that's how I saw it in my mind. But I started getting attention and I started saying, hey, like, oh, they're looking at me like, oh, I must be cute or I must be really killing it, you know. But it was in a conceited kind of way. It was in a kind of way where I clearly was getting something from it and I clearly um, didn't see it within myself before I started uploading pictures. So it led me to think that I was so hurt by that last situation going wrong with the man because of my weight that, oh, okay, I have to lose weight now. It's And that's what I have to make my life about. Because, yeah, my life is about God always. But I also felt like this attainable goal was mine now, now that I have no one to focus on. And that's just the thing. When you're insecure, it'll run in in the times of your life where you're down and out. It will really run you rampant and it will really run you into the arms of someone who's just going to abuse you more. So what I'm saying is that you have to fix those problems that you have with God. You have to give it all to God. If you know that you have issues, you know, God is the solver for all that. Um, so I have one more scripture and then that's it. Now, the verse I want to bring to question is Ephesians 5, 28 through 33. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother to be united with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. You guys, your man love you, and he's doing a lot to be with you. He's doing a lot because why? God is calling him to purpose. God is calling him to purpose, but he loves you, okay? And this is not just about some of us who are single getting a man so we can have kids, so we can get pregnant, so we can get a family. No, this is about God getting his child back. Everything else is secondary, you feel me? Everything else is secondary. We are secondary right now. This is the only time that we come second, okay? Because as soon as we get married, as soon as that ring on our finger... We come first after God, of course. We come first. But what your man is going through right now or what he has went through is going to draw him closer to you and and, at the given time that he's meant to be with you. Now, that time may be different, but God wanted me to let you guys know Jesus is the one. And if he said the things that concerning marriage about you guys if he's told you you're in a season of marriage I want you guys to understand what that means for your person not that it's not about you it's always about you because it's always concerning you but because one of our lives not about us never right but don't be arrogant I'm I'm saying that in a sense, like, please don't take that the wrong way. I'm saying this in a sense, like, yeah, we're going to go through things and we're going to help people and we're going to minister to people sometimes. But when it comes to your spouse, they're getting themselves together so they can be with you. They are, but on the other side of that, 
they are getting the best version of you that has been corrected, that has been tested, that has been through things and should be healed. It should be peaceful because the problems that you have, there's a great possibility that the problems that you have, your person is going to help you with. And I wouldn't say completely that you're going to have problems, but I'm definitely going to say that the issues that we do have, God is working on those things right now in this hour. He's bringing you guys to a close. You fasted, you prayed, you surrendered it to God already. All you have to do is what he's telling you to do. He's telling you to change. Whatever he's calling you to change, go ahead and do it. Get it out the way. You guys, the Lord had called me to stop eating fast food. He called me to start being more uh, sparingly with the things I spend my time on, things I spend my energy on, and the things I put my time into. So if you are doing the things that God told you to do, there is no need to doubt or feel afraid. There's no need to be scared of where God is taking you. You know, God is calling me back to how I used to be, and I love it. I feel like I've been reaching and I've been touching on this. I went through a long fast to the point the first and second day, I was like, I, I, why did I do this? Like, this is so much harder than I thought it would be. And I fasted before, but I'm telling you, second day into it, I was supposed to read Job. I wasn't even thinking about reading my Bible. I was not reading my Bible correctly. I was not reading what I was told to to read. I was doing a lot of shugging and jiving, a lot of trying to keep myself busy so I wouldn't think about what all the food that I was missing out on, okay? And I've never been this woman to just eat out all the time, but over the last couple years, it has been a comfort thing for me to eat fast food. And so now, the Lord has finally made it within reach for me. He finally made me, he's made me strong enough to say no. And so I'm telling you guys, you can say no. You can't say no. And the thing is, he's caused me to be so big of a worshiper that when those spirits of unbelief try to get upon me, I just worship. And I even ask God, I'm like, God, why why is this like this? Why do I feel funny like somebody's taking something from me? If you put this and establish this in my heart, why is it going away from me every time? I like what what is wrong and what's wrong is that the enemy stole from you he stole everything from you he stole your belief he stole all the positive things that you have going on you're you are jaded you are rigid because you believe too much about well it's not that you believed it but he made you believe that you doubted God And so, what I'm trying to get at, and I'm going to end this word right here, is that the Lord has done something so grand in us this year. And surely, the person that God has put you with, y'all are going to make it. Because he's making sure he dots all those I's and checks all those boxes for you because it's just time, okay? You are the bride. God says so. It's time, y'all. I hope y'all ready. Because you're really close to meeting your spouse or getting married with that spouse. Peace.